Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Tom Gummy. Today we are back for another Minecraft statue tutorial. Of course, what else will we be doing on the channel? But today we are doing another FNAF's location video. You guys have been absolutely loving these and it's been a while since I've done one. It's been like two weeks. And of course the reason behind that is purely because I've been busy IRL, like visiting universities, because of course in September I potentially will be starting university. So that's been delaying me a bit. And of course these statues take forever to design. When I say forever, that's not an, that's not like an exaggeration. This statue took me like legit five or six hours to design. So I really do hope you enjoy this. And if you did, definitely consider leaving a like on the video. That would be greatly appreciated. And also subscribing if you haven't already. Also really, really cool. So anyways, let's get into the tutorial because of course it is going to be an extremely long one. So by the end of this, my voice is going to be dead. You'll probably be asleep with boredom, but hopefully we'll get through it. Who knows? So anyways, the blocks you'll need are the following. You'll need blue stained clay, light blue stained clay, snow, block of quartz, light grey wool, magenta stained clay, yellow stained clay, black wool, pink stained clay, quartz stairs, quartz slab, and also never brick slab. So not too many blocks. In general, the colouring is very, very simple. It's just the shape of the character is not in any way sort. So yeah, let's begin. So I'll give you guys a second to grab them and let's begin. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by building the feet. Now the thing that's interesting about this statue is of course the dimensions are completely different to other statues. In terms of height and width it's very very similar but there's no specific measurement. So I can't give you measurements unfortunately throughout this but we will be going layer by layer left to right and I'll give you guys as many opportunities to pause as possible. So anyways let's begin. The basic layers are 8 blocks wide. So we're going to start off by placing our first layer and we're going to place one blue stained clay, two snow, two blue, two snow, and one blue. So that is layer number one. On top of this, we're going to start off again on the left side. We're going to place one light blue, two blue, two light blue, two blue, and one light blue. And that is again the second layer of the feet. For the third layer, we're going to place one blue. 2 light blue, leave a 2 block gap and place 2 light blue and 1 blue. So this is the first 3 layers so far, again so it's 3 tall and 8 wide. And then this is kind of where things get slightly more complicated. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by adding the 3D effects to this area because the shoes of course are 3D. What we're going to do is come to the bottom left corner, so basically the original block where we started. And in front of this we're going to place a layer of 1 light blue. 1 quartz, 1 light blue, 2 quartz, light blue, quartz, light blue. That's not light blue, that is of course a snow. If I crack that, there we go. So as you can see, again that is a layer in front and that is 8 wide. Now on top of this layer, we're going to start off on the left side again. We're going to place 3 blue stained clay, leave a 2 block gap and place 3 more. And it will now currently look something like this. Now the way we've done the shoes, or the way I've done the shoes should I say, is very similar to what we did with the baby statue. So the feet are pointed, and that's of course because she's wearing the ballet shoes and they are pointed at the end. So the way we're gonna do this is in front of the blue stained clay on the lower half, we're gonna place a quartz slab. Next to that, we place a light blue clay and then a quartz slab. And on the right side, same thing applies. One quartz slab, one light blue clay and one quartz slab. And it will give you something that looks like this. And that is essentially the feet complete and that was an unintentional rhyme anyways moving on so what we're going to do now is we're essentially going to come around to the rear side of the feet and behind this blue stained clay here we're going to go back one two and three using light blue stained clay and from here we're just going to build across seven so it'll be the same width as the front side and what this will do is give you an eight wide by four deep area as you can see and this is going to be the base of the legs i guess you could say so what we're then going to do is go to the blue stained clay at the front corner, go diagonal and place a quartz. Try with it, place one more, leave a two block gap and place two quartz. So as you can see, on the left side there should be a one block gap, two quartz, two block gap, two quartz and one block gap. And it should be set one block into the main part of the feet. So not including the 3D effects, we're talking here about the main part. Now behind this, we're also going to place two quartz. So now what this will do is turn it into two 2x2 two two squares of quartz. And it will look something like this. 
Now, if you've seen any of my other previous FNAF videos in the past, you'll recognise this style. It's kind of just to thin the legs out a bit and represent the ankles. And you can see that in statues, I believe it was the endoskeleton we did that. And also, I think we did it with Springtrap. And yeah, there's a few statues we did it where we made the ankles thinner. Just to emphasise, of course, that it is indeed the ankles. But what we're now going to do is bring it back out to normal size. So the way we're going to do this, and this is an easier way of doing it, is on top of this blue stained clay here, we're going to go up twice. Then, from this block, we're going to go seven blocks to the right using light blue stained clay, and then punch out the two original quartz. Now what you're going to do is replace the second layer of quartz with one light blue, so we now have a strip of eight light blue clay. Now, it's in line with the original layer, it just should have a one block gap in between, again, just to add a little bit of depth and a little bit more shape to it. So, on top of this layer, what we're going to do is, starting on the left side, this is where we're going to have the, like, bandage of... I, I forgot the word, like, you know how ropes, the ropes around the legs of Ballora. So, we're going to start off by placing one quartz, one light blue clay, one quartz, two clay, quartz, clay, and quartz. Then what we're going to do is on the left side and the right side, we're going to punch out the light blue clay underneath the quartz on each end. And again, this is just to round it off and make it look a bit smoother in transition. So again, this is what it looks like so far. Again, feel free to pause whenever you need to do so. I do appreciate this is a rather difficult build to do, which is why I'm really taking my time in explaining. Okie dokie. So moving on to the next layer now. It's pretty much just the opposite of what we've just done. So we're going to start off on the left side by placing one light blue, one quartz, one light blue, two quartz, light blue, quartz, and light blue. So it's the exact same pattern as the layer below, just opposite. So if it's light blue on the pattern below, it's quartz on the layer above. Very, very simple. Now, because we don't have much space when it comes to statues, that's pretty much where the lacing ends. And now we're starting to fade into the actual legs itself and then onto the area where the skirt is, or the dress. So on top of this, we're going to place one block of quartz, two light grey wool, two quartz, two light grey wool, and one block of quartz. And again, we're just going to be using light grey wool as decoration blocks, as shadows, rivets, just any detail that isn't necessarily going to be quartz. For the next layer, we're going to place one light grey wool, six blocks of quartz, and one light grey wool. And again, just backing up every time just so you can get a perspective of how tall it should be right now. I believe right now it should be nine blocks tall. Okay, so moving on up, again, continuing the pace, keeping it nice and fast. We're going to place one block of quartz, six blocks of light blue clay, and one block of quartz. And essentially what this is going to be doing is this is going to be the pelvis area. So if you look at Blora underneath the skirt, there's like a blue area at the top of the thighs and the top of the legs. So this is what this is representing. On top of this, we're going to do two layers of eight light blue clay. As you can see right here, and I'll get rid of that extra block. So you're starting to fade currently into the body. For the next layer, we're going to place one quartz, two light blue clay, two quartz, two light blue clay, and one block of quartz. And again, this is where we're, like, the final layer, I guess, before we start transitioning into the body. We're going to place two magenta clay, four quartz, and two magenta clay. And once you've done that, it should look something like this. Now, I'll give you guys a second to pause. I'll get rid of my arm as well, just to make it a bit clearer and a bit easier to see. Because, of course, it's really difficult. I can't specifically say to you dimensions, because it's all over the place. And that's the real pain that comes with this statue, but overall it's a recall really cool build, and I think as long as we go slow enough and take the time, it will come out really, really nice. But anyways, yeah, you can see it's a bit all over the place in terms of shape, but it's starting to form into something looking pretty cool. Maybe I'm just a bit biased, of course, because I designed it, but if you do enjoy it, again, let me know down below in the comments. Okie dokie, so let me get my arm back. And then we're going to continue. We're now working our way into the body. Now, of course, we will be coming at the sides later on, working that up and making that look nice. But for now, we're just going to build all the way to the top, and then we'll work on the sides again in a minute. So anyways, the next layer, what we're going to do is again come to the left side. We're going to leave a two-block gap. We're going to place one quartz, two magenta clay, one quartz, and then there'll be another two-block gap. 
Now, what this is rec- like recommending, what this is um, recreating, is the word I was looking for, is Ballora's hips. So, of course, Ballora's hips curve right in. She goes really, really thin around the waist area and then goes back out for the legs. So, this is going to be the waist area and then we'll be heading into the upper body. Okay, so for the next layer, on top of the quartz, we're going to place one light grey wall, two quartz, and one light grey wall. But now we're starting to expand back out. So we're going to go one to the left and one to the right. So from each quartz, we're going to, uh, or from one, each light grey, we're going to go one to the left using quartz, and on the right side again, one to the right using quartz. For the next layer, we're going to place again six quartz, and just like we did on the previous layer, we're going to go one to the left, and one to the right, and we're now back to having the body at eight blocks thick. So essentially, we're just missing out three blocks, and that's going to curve in and just make the body look a bit more curvy, I guess is the way of saying it. Okay, so the next layer we're going to place is simply eight blocks of quartz. So very, very simple. We will be punching a pattern out here, but we'll be doing that afterwards. Okay, so moving on, the next layer is going to be one quartz. Two light grey wool, two quartz, two light grey wool, and one block of quartz. The layer on top of that is going to be one light grey wool, two quartz, two light grey wool, two quartz, and one light grey wool. And this is starting to move on now into the upper body of the character. The next layer, or the next two layers, is going to be eight blocks of quartz, so two layers of solid quartz. For the second to last layer, we're going to place three quartz, two light grey wool, and three quartz. And then for the final layer, we're going to place eight blocks of quartz. And once you've done that, it will look something like this. And just to give you a, I guess, idea of the height, I'm not 100% sure myself, so this would be a good opportunity to test. The floor, as you can see, is Y5. So if we fly up to here, we'll see it is Y29, which means this statue currently is 24 blocks tall so it's the exact same as a normal statue apart from the legs and the body start at different times but that's really irrelevant it is 24 tall and at this point in time is eight blocks wide okie dokie so again i'll get rid of my arm we can have a little look a bit more close up just so you guys can pause if you need to and then we're going to move on to the sides and making some progress there so again take your time and we'll resume i guess in a second okay so now what we're going to do is go all the way back to the bottom of the statue come around to the left side and you should currently have something that looks like this it's a bit of a mess not gonna lie now the sides are four wide again the height in total is 24 and we're going to be building all the way to the top so it's not legs and arms it's going to be just the side of the body because the arms are slightly different for this build and i'll talk about that more later on but you can probably tell why in the thumbnail so what we do is we go to the bottom half and we come to this blue stained clay right here. There should be one light blue. That's part of the 3D effect. The first block is going to be this blue. From this blue, we're going to go one, two and three to the left using blue stained clay. And from here on up, we're going to be working left to right. So the second layer is one light blue, one blue and one light blue. And again, ignore this part here. This is 3D. The third layer, we're going to punch out the first block. We're then going to leave the second and punch out the third and replace with blue. For the fourth layer, just like the front, we're going to leave it. So there's going to be a block gap. And we're then, what we're going to do, we can just place a block in the corner. We're going to go one, two, three to the left. Punch out that block so you have a nice corner shape. And you'll have, as you can see, three light blue stained clay. Now we will be eventually punching this one out. So in fact, we can just do that now. So what you want is just two light blue stained clay with a block gap in the middle. So all you need to do is above the quartz, just place two light blue and bring it forward to the layer, as you can see right there. On top of this light blue, what we're going to do is go one up using quartz and one to the left. And on the third block of the layer, we're going to place one light blue. So that layer goes two quartz, one light blue and one quartz and should currently look like this. So again, this is similar to the front side. This part here is going to be the lacing. So the next layer is one light blue and two quartz. The next layer is one quartz, two light blue. The layer after that is one light blue and two quartz. And then the next layer is one quartz, two light blue. So as you can see, 
A very, very simple pattern, but very effective. Okie dokie, so the next two layers is simply going to be free light blue stained clay, so it matches up with the side very, very nicely. The layer after that, we place one quartz, two light blue, and then the layer after that, we're going to place free magenta clay. Now, this part is rather difficult, and rather different is probably the better way of putting it. So what we're going to do is directly behind this row of magenta clay here, we're going to place another row of magenta clay. Now on this row, we're going to leave the first block, and then on the second and third block, we're going to place two magenta clay, and then there'll be a quartz block right here. So I'll just put the quartz block where it'll be. It'll be right there, and that will just be a joint in the dress. But we're not going to do that for now, because that's all part of the rear side of the statue. So as you can see, this is the row of magenta, we place a row of magenta behind it, and on top of that row we place two magenta on the second and third block. Now directly above the magenta blocks we're going to place two quartz, and then we go one to the left. And then again, just like I said at the front side, this is all part of the curves in the hips. So as you can see here, we're going to start bringing it back forwards again, so we go forwards from this block here, by placing three blocks to the left. And as you can see, it makes it a bit difficult to explain, but in logic, it is very, very self-explanatory. So, we've got original layer, we go in one, up, up, and then back forwards. From here, we're going to do two more layers of solid quartz. And just like I said with the other side, so there is going to be a bit of a pattern here, which will cap off on this layer, so we can just place another layer of free quartz. And that will cap off and make sense later on. Now this area, the remaining four layers is going to be covered by the arms but again just for now we can cover it all using quartz so just three layers of quartz for each one or three blocks of quartz should i say per layer and once you've done that from the side it should currently look like this and again i'll give you a head-on view it should be 24 tall and four blocks wide and again i'll just fly up just so you can pause whenever you want i'll go up real nice and slow again i really want you guys to do this correctly first time because it is Really, really complicated, but I guess it's pretty self-explanatory in a lot of cases as well. But anyways, yeah, that is the left side of the body. We're now going to head around to the right side and pretty much replicate it. It's very, very similar. So we come to the bottom left corner. Again, bear in mind, this is the 3D effect. So we come to the blue stained clay right here. And we're going to go one, two, three to the right. For the second layer, we place one light blue clay one blue clay and one light blue. And then for the third layer, we're gonna start off at the first block, we come to the second, replace with blue. Third is light blue, and then the fourth block we punch out. Just like the other side, on top of the quartz, we're gonna place two light blue and bring it forward to the layer, so there should be a gap, two light blue and a gap. And on top of that, we're gonna have one quartz, one light blue and two quartz. So it goes back to being four wide. So we've got a layer of zero, a layer of two, and then a layer back to four. The next layer on top of that is going to be two quartz and one light blue clay. The next layer is going to be two light blue, one quartz, and it's very, very similar to the other side, just an alternating pattern. So the next layer is two quartz, one light blue, and then the next layer is two light blue, one quartz. So again, just backing up so you guys can see clearer, that is what it looks like. So anyways, just like the other side now, we're going to have three layers where it's pretty much just light blue. So the first two layers is three light blue, and then the third layer is two light blue, one quartz. And then we go ahead and cap that off with a layer of magenta clay. Currently looks like this. This brings us into the hips area, just like the other side, where we're going to go in a layer. So from this magenta block here, we're going to go three blocks to the right. And on the second and third block, we place two magenta up. And on top of that, we're going to place a row of three blocks of quartz. Just like the other side again, we're going to bring it forward. So we basically follow the template of the front. So we just go three blocks to the right for each layer using quartz all the way up to the top. As I said, a lot of that will have detail. And then there will also be the arms on it later on. Okie dokie. So it will look like this once you've done that. And if you want to pause, feel free to do so. So, once you've done that, we are at a very good point in the build. You have the sides, you have the front. We'll worry about the back in a second. What we're going to do now is start adding some of the effects. So, some of the, like, cut-ins, some of the edges. 
and it's very very simple there's only three at this point in time so that's why we're going to do them now it's good to get them out the way and we won't have to worry about them later on so the first one what we're going to do is come to the front side to the front side of the body to this area where we have like the uh, almost w shape of light gray wall now underneath the two center blocks we're going to punch out two quarts underneath that we're going to punch out three more layers so essentially all the way down until the magenta clay and that will be a four tall by two wide area. What we're then going to do is come around to the rear side and behind the magenta clay, we're going to place two quartz. And on top of that, we're going to place one layer of quartz. We're going to place a layer of two light gray wool and then two layers of solid quartz. So it's a four by two indent at this point in time. What we're then going to do is on the top side, in the left corner, we place an upside down quartz layer facing towards the right. And on the right side, we place one facing towards the left. And it will give you a curved shape. And again, that's just like a little indent in the stomach of the character. Just to add a little bit more shape and a little bit more interest to the plane area. Now, there's stuff like this very, very similar on the side of the legs. I'll zoom out just so you can see what it looks like. And again, it just adds a bit more shape, a bit more interest and adds some more shadow to the center where there is on the character a black line. But of course, we can't do that because it would be off-centered, or if you made it too thick, it would be a massive black thick strip going all the way through the center, and it wouldn't look too great. Anyways, in regards to the sides of the legs, what we do is it's in, it's more so the side of the arms, I guess you could say. We come up to this big area of quartz right here, just after we curve in, and on the first layer, we go up one and to the right. So the second and third block, and we're going to punch out three layers. So we'll end up coming up next to this light gray wall, and we'll have a 3x2 cut in. Just like before, we're going to come around to the rear side of it, place two quartz, and place a 3x2 of quartz behind it, so you'll have a 3x2 indentation, just so I back up so you can see whereabouts it is. And we're going to grab our quartz stairs, and just like the other side, on the left side we place an upside down one facing towards the right, and on the right an upside down one facing towards the left. And then again, just a little cut in for a little bit of detail underneath the arms. The right side has the exact same, so we do the exact same. We come to the bottom left corner of the part just after the cutting, go up and to the second and third block, punch out two more layers and indent a 3x2 of quartz. It doesn't really matter how clean it is, as you can see, it's a bit messy around here, a bit unorganized, but as long as you have a 3x2 of quartz indentation and then upside down stairs on left and right, it will look like this and it will look very, very nice from the outside, and that's all that matters. Okay, so you can see it looks a tad weird once you add the indentations until you've actually done the um, rear side and you've added the arms. It looks a bit off and that's that's great because it doesn't matter, honestly. So that brings us to the rear side of the build now. And once we've done that, we're on very good progress for finishing. So what we're going to do is come around to the rear side. And it's pretty much a game of matching everything up, filling everything in, and yeah, it's very, very simple. It's not very simple, that's an understatement, but it's not too difficult either. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to come to the bottom left corner and start this blue stained clay right here. We're going to go one, two to the right. We're then going to place two light blue and then two blue, and it will link up. The next layer we're going to place is two light blue, two blue, and two light blue. And then the final layer, we're going to have a block gap here. We're going to punch out this first block, replace with blue. We're then going to have four blocks of light blue, punch out this, replace with blue, and then have a one block gap. So this is what it looks like from the rear side, and of course that is the rear side of the shoes. Now just like the front side, what we're going to do is have a block a layer gap where we have the quartz, and then we're going to have a layer where we leave one block, and then we place six light blue, and then we leave one block. So there'll be a block gap on the left side and the right side, what you need to make sure you do is fill this area in using light blue because if you don't, you'll have a hole in between the legs. It will look like this and it looks really, really weird, really incomplete. So make sure to fill that in using your light blue. If you want to, you could add a bit of blue there just to make it look a bit more interesting. But again, make sure you fill that in. Otherwise, you're going to have a random gap directly above the ankles and it will look a bit weird. So yeah, that is the first two five layers. The next layer we're going to place is one light blue, and again, this is the same pattern as before of the uh, lacing. So the next block is quartz, two light blue, one quartz, and one light blue. The next layer is one block of quartz, one light blue, two quartz, light blue, and quartz. 
The layer after that, we're going to place one light gray, one light blue, two blue, one light blue, and one block of light gray wool. The next layer is two quartz, two light blue clay, and two quartz. And again, I keep on backing up after every layer just so you can pause if you need to do so. Okie dokie. So moving on now, we're going to come up to the next layer, of course. And next to this block of quartz, we're going to place six light blue clay. And then, of course, there will be a quartz on the other side. Now, on top of this, just like we did on the front side, we're going to place two more layers. So it's going to be pretty much two layers of solid blue or light blue. And then one layer of quartz, six light blue quartz. And again, this is kind of representing the color at the top of the phi area, which is, of course, solid blue. Anyways, the next layer is going to consist of six blocks of quartz. Of course, eight in total, but the blocks already there, we're not going to discuss. Backing up again. And the next layer in between the two magenta, so we should have two magenta, four quartz, and two blocks of magenta. And just like the first side, or the front, we're going to leave a two block gap for this part, place a quartz and two magenta. So we grab that back onto my hot bar. There we go. Grab two magenta and one block of quartz. And just like the left side, there'll be a two block gap right here. And you can now see the like curved shape fully complete of what the hips will look like. Anyways, moving on up again. So just like the front side, there is going to be a pattern here, but we're not going to worry about that for now. We're going to start off next to this quartz by placing one light grey wall, two quartz, and one light grey wall. On top of that, we're going to place a layer of six quartz, and we're going to do that again. So two layers of six blocks of quartz. The next layer, we're going to place one quartz, one light grey wall, two quartz, light grey wall, and one block of quartz. The layer after that, and the next layer as well, so the next two are the exact same. We're going to place one light grey wall, four blocks of quartz, and one light grey wall. And again, exact same again. One light grey wall, four blocks of quartz, and one light grey wall. And that will leave you three blocks away from the top. The next layer is simply six blocks of quartz. The layer after that, we're going to place one light grey wall, four quartz and one light gray wool and then the very top layer the final layer is simply going to be six blocks of quartz and once you've done that of course it will look like this from the rear side slightly less complicated than the front side for now but again we are going to be punching out a pattern in the rear side in regards to the top the shoulder area we're just going to fill this in with quartz we will be building a neck here but we'll discuss that later on in the video so for now just make it solid quartz very very simple Again, that is an 8 by 4 area. So, in regards to the area we're going to be punching out on the rear side, what we're going to do is come down to this area where we have two magenta in the middle, and above this we're going to punch out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 blocks. So we do this on the layer next to it, so it's going to be a 7 by 2 area on the two center blocks, and just like we did on the other side, we're going to indent a 7 by 2 area of quartz, like so. So you'll have a 7x2 indentation, but on the second layer, we're going to replace the blocks with two light grey wool. Now, just like the front side, in the top two blocks, we're going to place a quartz stair facing right and a quartz stair facing left. Again, both upside down, and that will give you a nice shape to the rear side of the statue that will look something like this. So again, that is just to add shadow to the character, make it look a bit more interesting. But the good news is, once you have done that, that is the body as a basic shape complete. So of course, we are missing the dress, and that's what we are going to address now. Get it? <laughs> oh god. Um, but yeah, that's what we're going to work on now, and then we'll work on, of course, the arms, and then ultimately the head. So making really nice progress. Okie dokie. So in regards to the dress, we're going to need our magenta clay. We're also going to need snow and our yellow clay, so three blocks in total. We're going to come to the front side now, so the front side of the legs. Come to the area right here with the light blue stain clay. There's a big area of light blue stain clay. We're going to come to the top layer of it where it should be one quartz, two clay, two quartz, two clay, and one block of quartz. And right here, we're simply going to grab our magenta clay 
and place a row of eight magenta clay. Again, this is a 3D effect, so it's built on top of, not replacing, and it will look like this. The next layer, we're going to leave one block, and we're going to place six magenta clay and leave one block. And again, as you can see, it's starting to make a curved shape, which is perfect because that is what we want, of course, for the dress. So the next layer for the dress is going to be like the outer, I guess, rim of the dress. So what we do is on the front left corner of this magenta clay here, we're going to go forwards and down. Punch out the original block and you'll now have a floaty block which is connected diagonally to the magenta. From here, we're going to go to the right and up, punch out the original, and you now have a side connection. Follow this pattern, so we're going to go to the right. We're then going to go down diagonal, to right, to right, up diagonal to the right, to right, and down diagonal to the right. And you'll have a shape which comes out looking something like this, almost like an M shape. And again, this is out of snow. And just for proportion, this is the first layer of eight magenta. So it's all in line with this. The second step we're going to do is we're going to grab our yellow. And if you look at the dress or the skirt in game, you'll notice it has like yellow balls or yellow uh, bells, I guess you could say, hanging off of the edges. So what we're going to do is on the two center blocks here, we're going to place two yellow stained clay underneath. And we're going to go one to the left and one to the right, punching out the two original blocks. So we have two blocks floating diagonally, as you can see right here. Now what we are going to do is we're going to do this on the side corners as well. But first we have to build the side. So that's what we're going to worry about right now. So again, this is what it looks like from the front side. And just to give you a proportion of what it looks like underneath in terms of measurements. There you go. So coming around to the left side now, you'll have something that looks like this. What we're going to do is we're going to start off on the top part. So we're going to leave a one block gap, place two, and then underneath that we're going to place a row of four. So in line with the magenta again, two on the top layer and four on the second layer. Underneath this, just like we did before, we're going to go forwards and down using snow on the left and the right side. And then on the two center blocks, just place two snow to link it together like this. In regards to the actual corner, this part here, all you need to do is just place a snow right diagonal there and it will link everything up perfect. And then we can go ahead and start adding some of the yellow clay. But first, we're going to come around to the right side and replicate this. So we come up to the layer again that's got the magenta. In the two center blocks, we're going to place two magenta. And on the lower row, we're going to place four, which will cover up, of course, the quartz. Just like we did before, on the left side, we're going to go forwards and down, punch out the original, forwards and down on the right, and in V2 center blocks, diagonal upwards there, we place two snow, and link together to the front side by going diagonal across using the blocks of snow, and it'll give you a shape that looks like this. Again, I'm trying to give you as many different angles and views as possible, but it's pretty self-explanatory again, so hopefully you all can see it, and just pause the video when you need to. Anyways, in regards to the yellow stain clay, so what we're going to do is again come to the front side and come to the bottom left snow here. We're going to go down and then to left, punch out the original. On the right side we do the exact same, we go down, to right, punch out the original, and you have a yellow clay in each corner, as you can see. So it kind of connects diagonally to both of the snow blocks. We can't center it perfectly, because then you'd need one here and it would look too busy. So it's just a rough... I guess, uh, in the middle, a medium ground. What we're then going to do is come around to the left side and underneath each snow, so the left one and the right one, place a yellow stained clay. Now, personally, I don't like the fact that they're not connected diagonally like they are on the other sides. But again, that brings the issue that it's not going to connect up perfectly and one will be off-centered. So that's why we're not doing that and we're just going to go down. On the right side, exact same logic applies. Underneath each snow, we're going to place a yellow stained clay, so two in total, and it will now look something like this from the sides. Okay, so hopefully you have something looking like this. As you can see, the dress kind of incorporates into the top of the body here, which is why we've got the magenta. If you come around to the rear side, it is the exact same as the front side. So what we're going to do is come to the line here, so where we have two magenta, four quartz, two magenta, and we're going to place a row of six magenta so we leave a one block gap we place six and then we have a one block gap and underneath that we have a row of eight just like we did with the front side we're going to start off on the bottom left corner so we go forwards and down using snow from here we're then going to go up diagonal to this block here we go to the right 
down diagonal to right, up diagonal to right, and then down diagonal. And it will give you, again, an M shape with these two snows being connected to the magenta and the others hanging freely. In regards to the corners, again, just go diagonal across, place one snow, and it will link up the corner. Same with this side. And then in regards to the yellow stained clay, just like the front side, we're going to place two directly underneath the cent uh, center snow. Go one to left, one to right, punch out the two middle ones, and you'll have something like this. In regards to the corner ones, on the, the left side and the right side, we're going to place one yellow. On the left side, we go one to left, punch out the original. On the right side, we go one to right, punch out the original. And it will give you something that looks like this. And once you've done that, that is the dress slash skirt uh, finished. And I'll do a little spin around just so you can pause if you need to. But that is, again, one of the more complicated parts of the build done. So if you got through that without any issues, then well done. Because, again, it is a bit confusing. Anyways, again, just a little spin around briefly. If you want to pause, feel free to do so. And then we're going to start working on some 3D effects on the upper body. After we've done that, it's kind of like uh, clean sailing, smooth sailing would be the better way of putting it, on to the arms and then ultimately the head. Okie dokie. So, in regards to this detail we're going to be adding to the upper body, we're going to be needing our light blue stained clay, our blue stained clay, and also our quartz. So three blocks in total. Let me swap that around so it's easier. There we go. And we're going to come to the front side again, so the side with the light grey wall and the smaller area of indentation and come up to the top left corner. So right here in the top left corner, we're gonna place one blue stained clay. Same logic applies on the right side. Go to the top right corner, place one blue. And then we're gonna start forming this into a 3D effect. So on the left side, we're gonna go underneath. We place one light blue to right and up one, and that's now a two by two. On the right side, we go down to left up. And again, that is now a two by two. And we're going to go one block inwards towards the light grey wall on either side. So we're starting to form a connection. Okie dokie. So underneath the block, which is next to the quartz, on each side we're going to place another blue clay. So underneath this light blue clay here that's next to the quartz, and underneath the light blue clay here that is next to the quartz, we're going to place a blue clay. On the left of that, we're going to place a quartz, and we're going to go down one. And same on the right side, we go to right and down one. So everything we do is mirrored. Okay, so on the left side, to right of this blue, we're going to place one light blue. We're then going to place two quartz and one light blue, and that will connect the two sides together. Underneath that, we're going to place two light blue, two quartz, and two light blue. And just to make it fill in, we're going to place two light blue in between the light grey and two light blue on this side. As you can see, it kind of moulds into the shape we formed with the light grey wall earlier on in the video. And once you've done that, again, that is a nice little 3D effect. Just adds to the shape of the character. And that is the body complete. So with that said, we are now free to move on to the arms. And this is the part I've kind of been dreading, not going to lie, because it is relatively difficult to explain. But hey-ho, we'll work it out as we go. I, I keep on unintentionally rhyming things. But anyways, so what we're going to do is come to the front side and come to the top left corner. To this block, of course. We're ignoring the 3D effects. We're going to go to this block of quartz, and we're going to place a light blue clay. This is going to be our starter point, our reference point. On the right side, we're going to do the exact same. So we go to the top right block, place a light blue clay to the right of it. From here, what we're going to do is we're going to go down once using light blue. So we're going to do the left arm first, and then down twice using quartz. So it's now four tall. We're then going to go up one on top, so it's now five tall. And it will extend one block over where the body finishes. So this is going to be our starting point. Okie dokie. So we go to the bottom block. We're going to go up one. And we're going to go one to left using the light blue. And one quartz. This is our second layer. So we're going to go up layer by layer now. On top of this, we're going to have our light blue clay here. From here, we go one, two, three to left using quartz. And on top of this, we're going to place a layer of three light blue clay. We're now in line with the layer of quartz, which overextends one block, and we're going to go four blocks to the left. So one, two, three, and four, and it will currently look like this. Again, it's in line with the side of the body, and it's going to be four thick, so it's not going to be in line with the 3D effect. Just want to specify that. The next layer we're going to start is we're going to place, on top of this quartz here, we'll place four light blue, and there'll be a one block gap, but 
On the left side, we're going to go one over to the left using an upside down quartz there facing towards the left side. On top of that, we're going to place a block of quartz and then we're going to go two to the right using light blue and one block of quartz. And again, there'll be a one block gap because the arms do curve around, so it's going to give it a more curvy shape. Continuing with the next layer now, we're going to place one light blue clay, two blocks of quartz, and on top of this quartz here, we're going to place a stair facing towards the right side, this time normal side up. On top of this, the next layer is going to be three blocks wide, so we're going to place three quartz. There'll be a one block gap here, of course, where the stair finished off on the last layer. And on top of that, we're going to cap it off using three light blue clay. Now I'm going to use this as an opportunity to let you guys pause, so if you want to, feel free to do so pretty much halfway there, so making good progress. Okie dokie, so the next layer on top we're going to place three blocks of quartz, but on the right side we're going to place an upside down stair facing towards the right side, so we're starting to curve back round to the centre. On top of this we're going to place one light blue clay, three blocks of quartz, the next layer we're going to place is one quartz stair facing towards the left side, again normal side up, and then three light blue stained clay. The next layer we're going to leave a one block gap on top of the stair, and we're going to start off by placing four quartz. So again, start overextending to the middle. The next layer, which is the final layer, we're going to leave a one block gap. We're then going to place a quartz slab. And then we're going to go two blocks to the right using quartz. And that will give you a final shape which looks like this. The backup, you can see it loops that round to the left side and then loops back round into the center. We will be adding some fingers, or two in this case, because we can't add four because it'll look weird. We're going to be adding two. But first, we're going to work on the right side and basically make it mirror because it is the exact same shape, the exact same pattern just on the other side. So let's begin. So similar to the way we did it before, we're going to start off at our reference point, which is going to be this light blue clay. We're going to go one up using quartz, and then we're going to go one down using the light blue, and two down using quartz. So it's now five tall, same as the other side. We come to the bottom layer, we're going to go up one to the second layer, and we're going to go one to right using the light blue and one quartz. The next layer, next is light blue, we're going to go three blocks to the right using quartz. And then the next layer is going to be three light blue clay. So that is the first four layers. The fifth layer from this block of quartz, again, the one that overextends one block across uh, on top of, should I say, the body. We're going to go one, two, three, and four to the right. And on top of this, we're going to leave a one block gap. We're going to place four light blue clay and then an upside down quartz there facing towards the right side. Again, just like the other side, we're starting to loop around to the right side before looping back in. The next layer, we're going to leave a one block gap. We're going to place one quartz, two light blue, and one block of quartz. And then the layer on top of that, we're going to place a quartz there facing towards the left side, normal way up, two quartz, and one light blue clay. On top of this, we're going to leave a one block gap for where the stair is, place three quartz, and on top of that, place three light blue. And just like the other side, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to let you guys pause and catch up if you need to and use this as a reference point. Again, I'm going to zoom out just so you see what it looks like in total. It should be the exact same side to side. Okay, so continuing now, on top of this, we're going to place three blocks of quartz, but on the left side, we're going to place an upside down stair facing towards the left. On top of the stair, we're going to start off by placing one quartz. We're then going to go two blocks to the right and place one light blue clay. The next layer, we're going to start off on the left side directly above the quartz. We're going to place three light blue stained clay. And then we're going to have a quartz stair facing towards the right side. The next layer, which is the second to last layer, we're going to start off by placing one block of quartz. We're then going to go to the left once and to the right twice. And then for our final layer, we're going to start off on the left side by placing two blocks of quartz, a quartz slab, and then of course there'll be a one block gap. And as you can see, it curves back around. It'll be the exact same as the left side, and we'll give you something that looks like this. Now, as cool as that looks, in my personal opinion, it's not complete. And the reason that is, is of course because it is only one block thick. So what we need to do is now go ahead and start making it four blocks thick. And the way we're going to do this is by coming around to the rear side, and essentially following the outline. 
So as you can see, this is our outline. I'm kind of like skimming around it. It goes all the way around. We don't need to worry about the center parts. What we're going to do is from this outline, whatever block it is, it does not matter. We're going to extend it backwards. One, two, three, all the way back. So as you can see, if it's like blue clay, bring it back. One, two, three, one, two, three. The only thing we're going to ignore for now is going to be the stairs. We'll come back to that later on and add them afterwards. So if you see a stair, just ignore it for now, but make sure that you're essentially going around the outline of the arms, just filling it in with the corresponding color. Now, in terms of the slab, again, just bring it all the way across and that'll bring you up to the top and then just work your way back down again. It's very, very simple. You just go around, bring it three backwards on each one and then it will link up and you'll have a four wide arm area. And then all you need to do at the rear side is basically copy the pattern and we'll discuss that in a minute. So for the stairs, again, the reason why I left them to after is just they can be a bit of a pain to place if you don't have a block to place them on. Once you've got all the blocks to place it on, it becomes very, very easy. And you can just go ahead and make it extend it three blocks over. And what that will give you, as you can see, is an arm that is four blocks thick. So you have the original layer and then you have the blocks you've gone three blocks backwards. Now we need to replicate this on the right side. So we head over to the right side, head round to the rear side and just extend it all backwards again. So same process. It's a bit repetitive, but it needs to be done, of course. So that's what we're going to do is just go all the way around the design and extend everything three blocks backwards. And I'm doing it four for some reason there. We need to make sure it's three because otherwise it's going to be five wide and it's going to look a tad weird. So make sure you're not being a bit silly like me, not counting properly there, rushing it and probably getting a bit distracted because I'm waffling a bit. Um, but yeah, make sure you're doing it nice and correct. Three blocks on each layer and then it will loop all the way around and you'll have a nice complete arm. I say complete, a nice mainly complete arm because of course we still need to add the pattern to the rear side because at the rear side it currently looks like this. Anyways, just like the other side, we're gonna go ahead and add the stairs for each layer. So I believe there's like four sections of stairs in total, two on this side and then two on the other. And then just like the other side, you'll have yourself a very, very nice arm, which is of course now four blocks thick and is 3D. So once you've done that, it will look something like this. The last step we're going to add, or the last touch, should I say, is we're going to add some fingers. So come to the front side and come to the top of the left arm. On the first block of quartz here, at the very top, we're going to place an upside down stair facing towards the right. We're then going to leave one block gap and place another one. And this is going to be our fingers. On the right side, exact same. So come to the first block, upside down stair, leave a block, upside down stair. Now, theoretically, you'd ask why is there two fingers? It's because we can't add more, really. That's pretty much the only reason why. The fingers just make it look a bit more curved and really just add to it and I think finish the build off and make it look great. Without the fingers, it kind of ends as like a stub and that's not the best. So that's the reason why we're adding the fingers. Of course, it's a bit of a pain to do um, because you can only add two on each one, but it looks better than not having any at all, in my opinion. Again, that's up to you. You can add... To you can choose to add them or not. Anyways, in regards to the rear side of the arms, because that's pretty much all we got to do before we move on to the head, it's just a case of matching up the pattern to the same as the front side. So we're going to do it layer by layer. We're going to start on the rear side of the right arm. In this case, it is our left. So we have our first layer, which has got a one block gap. That is going to be quartz. The next layer we're going to place is two quartz and one light blue. On top of that, we're going to place three light blue. And then we're going to place three quartz. So again, I'm kind of rushing through this part. It is very self-explanatory. So what you could do is just match it up to whatever color is at the front side. That would probably be the easiest thing to do. So you can see here is light blue. So this is a row of three light blue, a row of two light blue, two layers of quartz, one light blue, two layers of quartz, two light blue, and then two quartz. So all you need to do is just look at what's already there on the other side. So you can see this block is quartz. So this one's quartz. This one is light blue and two quartz. And it's very, very simple. It's just a case of matching everything up, making sure it's the exact same pattern as the front side. I will back up just so you can see, just in case you want to, I guess. And then we'll skip right ahead onto building the head. So that's what it looks like from the rear side. Again, very, very simple, very self-explanatory. And you can do it in like a minute, li literally like a minute. Okay, so moving right along. This is where we're going to start working on the head. What we're going to do is come to the front side and we're going to come to this area here, which is an eight by four area. And we're going to basically start building a neck. So for this neck, what we're going to do 
is build a 4x4 platform of quartz blocks. So we leave a 2 block gap and place a 4x4 as you can see right here and just fill the middle in. So this will be a platform and then the head's going to go on the platform. The reason we're doing this is just so it's a bit uplifted from the neck and isn't flat. What we're going to do is come around to the rear side and on the left corner and the right corner we're also going to place a quartz slab. I would do this at the front side but you would have to then change it afterwards and it would look a bit naff to say the least. So that we're going to not worry about that. For now it's just going to be the rear side that's going to have two slabs just to make it look a bit more curved. Because that's what we want to do. We want to make the statue as curved as possible in this case. So from this platform, what we're going to do is we're going to start off by placing four blocks of magenta clay on top of it. So this is the first layer, four magenta clay. Of course, the head extends two blocks out. So what we do is we're going to, on the left side, bring it out one with magenta and same on the right. And there'll be a two block gap in between and that'll make sense in a second. What we're then going to do is we're going to bring it out one more block using quartz. And on the left side, we go one to left using light gray. On the right side, we go one to left, uh, one to right, should I say, using light gray. On the left side, we go one to left using quartz. On the right side, we go one to right using quartz. And you now have an area which is eight wide. So three blocks, two block gap, three blocks. That's eight in total. And behind it, next to the magenta, we're going to place two quartz on each layer. So on the left side and the right side, we place two quartz. And that will give you an eight by two overhang. Theoretically, if you finish this area in you'd see that that is, of course, an 8 wide by 2 thick area. But we don't want this. This is going to be empty because that's going to be the jaw area. Now, in regards to the sides, of course, we have a 2 block overhang on the front side. So we're going to bring it back 6 blocks. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So it'll overhang the rear side of the body too. And same logic on this side. We go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And link together, placing a 6 by 2 in between. And what this will do is give you an 8x8 eight eight square. Now, of course, if you went on the logic, this was all filled in. It would now be an 8x8 eight eight square, and this is going to be our template for the head. So an 8x2 of a hang at the front side and the rear side. And, of course, we've got this gap here. Go ahead and fill in this whole area using quartz, because otherwise you're going to have the issue you'll be able to see through the bottom of the head, similar to the issue you have on the legs. If you don't do it, you'll be able to see there'll be gaps here, and it will be able to see through. So that's not what we want. Just leave it all there. And you'll have, again, something that looks like this. Of course, there'll be an equal gap on the left side and the right side, or at least hopefully there will if you've done it correctly. And it will currently look like this. Okay, so we're going to start working on the front side first. Bear in mind, each side is an 8x8 eight eight square. So the front side, we're going to start off by coming to the third block and replacing with a stair facing towards the right. And come to the sixth block and replace with a stair facing towards the left side. Also, go ahead and punch out the first and eighth block just to take the corner shape out and again make it a bit more circular. This seems to be the theme of the build. We want it to look as circular as possible. Anyways, continuing now from the left side, we're going to place a block of quartz. We're then going to place a block of magenta clay, have a four block gap and then place one magenta clay and one block of quartz. So the second layer, very, very empty. Two blocks, four block gap, two blocks. The next layer, and we'll come back to a draw in a minute, that's why I'm leaving that, is going to consist of three blocks of quartz two magenta and three blocks of quartz and again that is the third layer the fourth layer we're going to place is one light gray wool six blocks of quartz and one light gray wool the next layer which is the fifth layer is going to be three blue stained clay two quartz and three blue stained clay and then the next layer which is the sixth layer is going to be the exact same so that is three blue stained clay two quartz and three blue stained clay. And that's going to be, of course, the eyes. For the seventh layer, we place two quartz, one light gray wool and two quartz. We're then going to place one light gray wool, two quartz, and that will bring it to the end. For our final layer, our eighth layer, we're going to place simply eight blocks of light blue clay. We're going to punch out the corner blocks. So we go to the top left and top right and punch out each corner block. Again, just make it more circular. And that will leave you with something that looks like this. Now, of course, right now it looks a bit of a mess because the jaw is a mess and not complete, but we'll worry about that right now. So this is what it currently looks like, the jaw area. What we're going to do is grab ourselves our black wall and directly above this row of four magenta clay, we're going to place four black wool. Now, above that black wall, we're going to place a row of four magenta clay and then we're going to bring that row forwards one. So it's basically capping everything off. 
There'll be a one block gap on each side. Just come in the sides and place one block on either side just to fill it in. And you'll have a gap which consists of two blocks on the first layer and four blocks on the second. What we're then going to do is grab ourselves our quartz slabs. And on the first block, on the upper half, in between the two magenta, we're going to place two quartz slabs. And on the second one, underneath the two magenta, we'll place two more. And it will look something like this. Now, this may look familiar for some of you because it's the exact same jaw we use for baby. And that's for a good reason. It's because the jawline is very similar. So we could reuse it. And that's always a cool thing about statue building is you can reuse some of the features of your designs. Now, just like with the baby statue, what we're going to do is underneath this magenta here, we're going to place a row of four quartz slabs and then we're going to bring it forward to the layer. So there's a four by two of quartz slabs underneath just to cap the jaw off. And once you've done that, it looks like this. But of course, that is not the face complete. I will get rid of my arm, give you guys an opportunity to pause. Again, bear in mind it is an 8x8 square, just for dimensions. And then we're going to go ahead and add the 3D effects, such as the eyes and the cheeks. Okay, so we don't want to reset to default, so that's not what we want to do. We want our arm back. For this part, we're going to need our pink clay. We're also going to need our blue clay and our never brick slabs. So we're going to start off on the bottom left corner. So basically here... We're going to go up to the second layer, to the magenta, and directly above that we're going to place a pink clay. And same on the right side, directly above the magenta we place one pink clay on either side, and that is going to be our cheeks. Again, that is 3D. On top of this two magenta blocks here, we're going to place two blue stained clay, and that is going to be our nose. And then the final touch we're going to add is to the eyes, so we come to the bottom layer of the three blue clay. And on the lower half we're going to place three blocks of never brick slabs on each side. And once you've done that, it will look like this. Now, you may be asking why are we adding these slabs? That is because simply Ballora does not have her eyes open. And she kind of has like curved eyes, which is what the slabs are trying to represent. So, uh, yeah, I want to give a quick shout out to Diamond. Because, of course, when I was building this, he recommended that idea. And I think it works really, really well. So, again, huge thanks to Diamond for that idea. I think it just makes the build look a ton better. So yeah, that is pretty much what it looks like once you've built the front side. You can start to get a feel for what the build will look like when it's done. So not forgetting about the sides, that's what we're going to do now. What we're pretty much going to do is just go to the template and build up seven. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. But for the seventh block, we're going to use light blue. So we have six quartz and one light blue. And we're going to follow this round, but we're going to build up five quarts. So one, two, three, four, five, and then leave it. So we go one, two, three, four, five, and we're going to do that all the way across. So that will give you six layers of quartz. So the first layer plus the five we've just built. And then for the second to last layer, we're simply going to place a row of six light blue. And same for the final layer, just place a row of light blue. It's a bit complicated because you're going to keep banging on the arm right there. But what you'll see is you'll have something that looks like this, a plain surface, and then the top two layers, apart from this one block here, is going to be solid light blue. And come to the top left corner, punch it out, just to, again, give it a bit more shape. Come to the bottom left corner, again, same logic, punch it out, just to give it a more circular feel. And that is what it looks like. Again, I apologize, it is a bit of a pain to show you, but essentially it is six layers of quartz and two layers of light blue, with the exception of this block right here. Coming around to the right side, exact same logic. So we're going to build up five blocks of quartz on each layer. So the first one being six, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then the next one's being five. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then five for the next few layers as well. That'll bring you up to the edge. And just like before, we're going to place our layers of light blue. So the first layer we're going to place is six light blue. And then the final layer is going to be seven. We'll come all the way up to the end. Leave a one block gap on the left side and the right side, and also punch out the bottom right corner, again, just to curve it off a bit. Again, apologies for the bad angle, I can't really show you much, but hopefully you'll be able to understand and build it yourself, just from looking at this, and I guess my brief explanation. Okie dokie, so coming around to the rear side now, it's basically a case of matching everything up. So, the first layers, we got the original layer of six quartz, because there's one block gap on either side, we're going to place four more layers of quartz. So each layer, again, six wide because we've got a block on either side already done. Then for the sixth layer, we're going to place six light blue clay and we do this twice more. So the sixth, seventh and eighth layer is all six light blue clay. As you can see, top left and top right already punched out. So it will look like this. Now in regards to the top, what we're going to do is just fill it in using light blue clay. 
and we will be adding some 3D effects to the top, but we'll worry about that in a second. For now, what we're going to do is add some more 3D effects to the sides of the head. But yeah, that is the rear side. Again, that is an 8x8 square with each corner punched out, just to make it, again, I'm going to say it one more time, a bit more circular. Okie dokie. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a little spin around of the head. I'm going to show you as much as I possibly can without the ears getting in the way. Or the ears? The uh, arms. <laughs> How am I getting ears and arms confused? If it does, and I feel it does, I may edit in some pictures without the arms there, just so you can see it a bit clearer just in case anyone is struggling. But of course, each side is an 8x8 square with each corner punched out. It's very, very simple. Six layers of quartz, and then the final two layers are light blue, with the exception of the rear side, where it's five layers of quartz and three layers of light blue. In regards to the top, again, just solid light blue, but we will be adding some effects in a second. For now, we're going to be adding some ears. So we don't want a split screening. We want our arm back. I keep on messing that up. I don't know what it is. So, what we need is we need quartz, and we need yellow clay. We're going to come around to the left side, and to the top right corner, so to this block here. And we're going to go down one, two, and three. So, to the lower block of the eye, the lower block of the blue stained clay. We're then going to go one and two to the left. So, it's now in line with the six, or it's the sixth block, basically, from the left, or the third block from the right. I'm going to place one block of quartz. Underneath that, another quartz, and underneath that, one yellow clay. So it should be a two-block gap at the bottom, a three-block gap at the top, and then it's two blocks set back from the front side. Same logic applies on the right side now. We go to the top left corner. We're going to go down to the lower half of the eye. We're going to go one and two, and place a quartz. Underneath that, another quartz, and underneath that, a yellow clay. As you can see, it's set back two blocks, three away from the top, two away from the bottom. And once you've done that from the front side, just adds a bit more shape to it and a bit more colour and detail with the yellow, of course, standing out quite nicely. So that brings us to our final step of the build, which is, of course, the top side. So the top of our head, of course, isn't flat. So what we're going to do is come to the front left corner. We're going to go forwards one. And from here, we're going to count one, two and three. I'm going to place two light blue and then we'll have a three block gap. Behind this, we're going to leave a two block gap and place four, two block gap. And we're going to do this twice more. So two block gap four, two block gap, next layer, two block gap, four, two block gap. So we do that three times. Just like the front side, we're going to cap it off by leaving a three block gap, two blocks, and then three block gap. So that just adds, again, another layer to the top, smoothens it out a bit and doesn't make the head so flat. So that is the first step. Again, from above looks like this. There's a one block gap at the front side and a two block gap at the rear. And the reason why there's a two block gap at the rear is for a good reason. We're going to come around to the rear side of the head, and the two centre blocks, we're going to leave a three block gap. On the fourth and fifth, we're going to place two light blue clay. And then we're going to bring it backwards one. So it's now overextending the rear side of the head by one block. What we're then going to do is go one to the left and one to the right. And then we're going to go down a layer. So we bring it down one layer of four. And that's going to act like the hair or the back of the hair sticking up. And again, just adds more shape and makes it more realistic to the character model. Unfortunately, I can't see very well on like reference images or the character models itself the back of Ballora's head, so there may be something we're missing. If there is, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. But I couldn't see anything, so that's why I didn't include it. With that said, that is the statue complete. You will hopefully have your very own Ballora statue if you followed the video. Apart from that, really do hope you enjoyed. Again, this design took me like four hours or three hours, I can't remember. It was it was a long, long time. Took forever, so if you did enjoy it, definitely consider leaving a like. I would very much appreciate it. Subscribe if you haven't already, and also check out my other FNAF sister location videos. I'll leave a link to the playlist down in the description, as well as the card system up in the top right corner of the video. We'll link you right there. Of course, you can hear my voice is slowly dying, so I'm going to wrap up here before my voice just gives up and it like leaves me for a week and then I'll cry. So yeah, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, have a great week, guys. My name has been Tom Tomogomi, and goodbye. In the sky, gazing far into the night, I raise my hand to the fire, but it's no use, cause you can't stop it from shining through, it's true, baby let the light shine through, if you believe it's true, baby won't you let the light shine through.